today, just before I dismiss the Sunday School, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Pastor Sureka Hulugal, who is not a stranger to any of us, okay? Um, as you know, he and Krishani are the head of our Foursquare Great Britain Church. They also overlook the European uh, areas, see? European or members of the European Foursquare Board. I don't want to get all this wrong. But forgetting all of that, right? Forgetting all of that, these two amazing people have um, been so much a part of our lives, right? We started off, all you young adults, right? We started off together getting to know each other in a young, young adults prayer cell, which we had in our house. And we came as young couples with our little babies, right? Some of them are here today, all grown up. And we grew together. And God called them to go as missionaries to England. And he took them from strength to strength and from glory to glory in him. And we're so blessed and so privileged to have them with us. And I think they'll both be sharing today. So welcome, Pastor Sureka and Pastor Krishani. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? How's everyone doing this morning? Good. Excellent. Oh. Let's just pray. Let's pray and let's be expectant of what the Holy Spirit wants to continue even doing this morning. We had an amazing time of worship, the communion. But would you even, you know, just lift your hands to the Lord in a position of receiving this morning? And even say, Lord, I want more. God, I want more. See, we have to come in faith. You know, the word of God is so true that as we diligently seek him, he rewards us. Each time we come before him, he rewards us. I say, Lord, I, I'm expectant of more. Who? Oh. You know, this you know, this morning, even as I was praying for you, I felt the Lord give a word. And the Lord was saying that the, 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 the river has begun to stir up with you, amongst you. God is stirring up something amongst you. And I've, I've, I sense the Lord is saying, this is for everyone. This is not just for leaders, but the Lord is saying, drink. Drink of what he is doing. And to take that to wherever you are, to take it with you. Oh, whether it's you know, amongst you as you come together, amongst the men, the ladies, the young people. But there's a stirring of the spirit. And God wants you to drink. God wants you to be filled. So that that is what you take. But even with that encouragement comes a warning. And the word that the Lord gave me was stagnation. And I, I, I sense the Lord saying, be careful of stagnation. Be careful that if you only drink and not give, you will be stagnated. But it's an exciting season. Even in the midst of chaos around the world, even in this nation, God is pouring out his spirit in over his church. God is pouring out his spirit upon every generation. And the Lord wants his church to step into that outpouring. He wants us to step in because he's already begun even signs of revival. You know, rain, when rain starts, it comes with a drizzle. It, it doesn't start with thunder and lightning. It comes with a drizzle. And the drizzle has already started here living way. And God wants you to begin to step into that. The more you step into that, the more you are going to experience that. I believe even this morning, some of you experienced like, like drops of rain coming on you. 
That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But he wants it to flow. He doesn't want it to get stagnated. And would you just take a minute right now and would you respond to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let it flow in me. Let it flow through me. God, let it, let it flow. Lord, pour out more. Like the disciples, they did not wait in the upper room and have another prayer meeting, but they went on to the streets. And wherever the Lord is leading you, and if, if this word resonates with you, if you are in agreement with that word, would you just pray right now? Would you pray right now? And say, Lord, use me. Lord, fill me. Let it flow through me, Lord. Oh. Oh. Just feel free if you want to just respond in, in, in your spiritual language. Just begin to do that. You don't need to be, just remain, you don't need to be silent, but, but respond. Just lift your voices to him. Lift your voices to him and say, Lord, pour it out, Lord, amongst our young people, amongst me. You be that vessel. You be that vessel that the Lord uses in this, in this season. You be that vessel. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, would you speak to us even through your word this morning? Lord, would you give us faith to believe the very impossible things? In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe the Lord's been talking to you all on transformation. And that's what I heard last Sunday, Pastor Dines saying. It's great that he's not here because I can just do whatever I want. <laughs> no. Um, and, you know, I really want to bring a word about, you know, what do we carry? What do we carry? Because this is a, such a key season for the church. Not just in Sri Lanka, but globally. And you're going to see more and more chaos. You're going to see more and more confusion happen. But our leading should not be, we should not take our leading from that chaos. We should not take our leading from the politics. We should not take our leading from the economics. But we have to take our leading from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the word of God, you know, as, as Prasad was really bringing the word this morning. You know, this is what we need to lean on. This is what we need to take our direction from. And not just what's happening in the world, because the world doesn't have the answer. Agreed? You're, you're very quiet this morning. Maybe it's because I'm kind of a stranger here. <laughs> but I love participation. <laughs> but, you know, just I want you to ask yourself a question. What do you, what do you carry with you? What do you carry with you? You know, when you, when you came to church, when you go out, when, what do you really carry? You know, I know like, you know, some ladies, if you're like my wife, you know, you, you take a handbag and, you know, you, you take, you know, every answer to the world's problems is inside that handbag. <laughs> and husbands, you know, you dare not put your hand in because you may not find your hand coming out. <laughs> But really, what, what do you carry when you go to school, when you go to work? Because I believe God's calling us to carry his presence. And, you know, it's not something that we put on. But it's something that is within us. That's something, you know, that is within us. Because we are called to demonstrate the kingdom of God wherever we go. It's not a Sunday thing. Amen? It's not a Sunday thing. If it's a Sunday thing, you know, Christianity, Christianity is just a performance. But it is from Monday to Saturday. Sunday we come and get fired up, we get filled, and we take that into the week. And no matter where you are, you know, you, you, we carry, we are to carry the kingdom of God. See, that's why Jesus demonstrated, isn't it? He taught, 
wherever he went. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. You know, he loved people. You know, beyond the religious um, establishment, he loved the sinner. He loved the brokenhearted. And we are called to do that in this season. Say, so how many of us know that, you know, we pray, we are praying for the nation. But do you know that the answer to this nation lies with you? It's not just the prayer. The prayer is important. But when you pray, you become the answer. You become the answer wherever God has placed you. Because sometimes we have this notion, I'm going to pray and someone's going to be the answer. Are you with me? Or maybe not you all. Right? You know, sometimes we think, yeah, I'm praying, but I'm, I'm not the answer. No, we, are, we become the answer when we pray for the nation. When we say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Lord, let your will be done. Because God, when we pray, God moves. But he, he doesn't just move by waving a wand from heaven. He moves through his sons and daughters. He moves through his sons and daughters. You know, in the book of Ezekiel, God was saying, I am searching out for a man who will stand in the gap, who will bridge that gap, and who will call upon me because there is chaos in the nation. And are you that man, woman, or child, or young person whom God will want to use? See, see sometimes we think, yeah, you know, I'm praying and God is going to move. But he, he will move. But he will move through you. He moves through a human being. Well, sometimes, you know, he, he did use a donkey once. <laughs> when a human being, you know, <laughs> was disobedient. But he uses a person. So turn to the person next to you and say, he's going to be using you. Be convinced of that. Because we always expect someone else to take the responsibility. But it's time that God is saying the church has to be stepping up. And that's for all of us. You know, we all have different roles. I have different roles and responsibilities. But that doesn't mean that it's a selected few, but it's for everyone. Because God uses a person. Say that with me. God uses a person. And we are called to take out his kingdom, to take his kingdom wherever we go. See, the Lord has enabled us to do that. You know, turn with me to, let's start um, at Ephesians chapter 3. I'm just kind of building up my message, uh, but Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, um, and Acts chapter 8, I'm going there as well. But Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Can you see how limited we are when we compare ourselves with God? We are so limited. You know, it, you know we think in a very limited way. And it says, you know, he is able to do how much? Okay, I'm going to wind this up. How much? Far more abundantly. See, do you believe that? Do you believe that God is able to do far more abundantly than even your prayers? But notice the, the rest of that verse there. According... To the power that works in Pastor Dinesh. Shall you read it together? According to the power that works in within us. So where is the power? Where is the power? Within us. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. So you carry a power that is beyond you. Wow. In a limited, fallen, human body or human spirit, we carry the power of the Holy Spirit. That is beyond us. And that is capable of doing the impossible. Hallelujah. The question is, 
question is, do I believe that? Or do I doubt that? See, I can, I wish, I can give Darika, say, um, um, 10 million rupees. <laughs> I'll give it to you in heaven. <laughs> right? So, you know, I give her 10 million rupees. And she gets this check. What if she doesn't believe that, it's, it's, you know, that, that that is valid? So she takes the check, tears it up, and throws it away. What happened to the 10 million? Lost it. Maybe the both are part of the car, yeah? I don't know whether they, they are still around. <laughs> they kind of piece, you know, put the pieces together. No. But she has lost the 10 million. Why? Because she did not believe. And I believe there's so much of unbelief. This is not crit a critical thing, but really that the church, there is so much of unbelief in what God has promised us. And that is why we are not seeing most of the things that he has promised us in his word. That is why we are not seeing the miracles and the, and the, and the, and the deliverance that is, that is happening. Because we are guessing and we are, we are kind of questioning, is that really me? Where well, those in the New Testament literally believed, believed what he was saying. See, Acts 1 8 says, You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So, if, the, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, what do you have? You have the power. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not your power, but the power of the Holy Spirit that God wants us to carry with us wherever we go, and to release it. And to release. Not to keep, but to release. See, when you read the book of Acts, I, I don't think those guys even had a clue of what was happening. We have the word of God. We have greater knowledge in that sense. But we have to believe. Amen? So, you know, God is raising up and you know, age doesn't matter. You know, here's a story. We were in uh, France, in Bordeaux, about three months ago, and um, we were teaching them on the power of the Holy Spirit. And at one point, I felt that we need to just begin to pray for one another. And at that meeting, there was this lady who had met with an who had met with an accident in 2021, and she was in severe pain even when she came, and she had brought her son who was an unbeliever, okay? Brought a son who was an unbeliever. Now our theological minds say that guy cannot preach, we cannot pray for her. She, can never, she cannot be healed because he's an unbeliever, right? So during the service I said, look, you know, who needs healing, stand up. And I said, I want the person next to you to start praying. And so this boy laid hands on this lady. She was instantly healed, her back put into place. Now tell me that it, that was his power or, that, or was that the power of the Holy Spirit? All that he did was he believed because I taught on believing. All that he did was he believed in this. He believed the word of God that was being preached. There was faith that was rising up in his heart. And he laid hands on his mother and she was healed. He didn't go guessing, uh, but you know, I don't know, you know, I, that does nothing of the guessing part. But he just believed what was shared and he just obeyed. He obeyed. And I believe God wants us to do that in this season. And, you know, last, last Sunday was beautiful, seeing the young people go around and pray. You know, we're going to do something similar even this morning after I speak. Are you guys okay? Yeah. John 7, 37. So you all know these scriptures. John 7, 37 to 39.
you sometimes find that certain books in the Bible go missing? <laughs> Especially when you start looking for them? <laughs> Are we there? Yeah. Cool. On the last day of the feast, the great feast, Jesus stood up and cried, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He was saying, come get filled. Come get filled by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come get filled. See, when we are thirsty, he wants us to come to him. And, you know, the, you know coming to him and drinking, coming to him and being filled of the, with the Holy Spirit is not just a Sunday occurrence. It's a daily occurrence. Daily occurrence. Because as D.L. Moody says, we leak. So we need an infilling. And, and he says, whoever believes in me, See that? Whoever believes in me. We, do we believe in Jesus? Yes, yes, yes. Do we believe in Jesus living where? Yes. Whoa, we are getting somewhere. <laughs> okay, now I lost my place. <laughs> Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit there. Out of his heart will flow how many rivers? How many rivers? Many rivers. Rivers of living water. See, when we drink, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, there are rivers of healing. There are rivers of the prophetic. Rivers of love. Rivers of compassion. Rivers of, you know, of helps. Rivers of leadership. There are rivers that begin to flow out of you. But it is through the Holy Spirit. But it's only for those who believe. So keep the check when I give it to you in heaven. <laughs> Can you see that? There are rivers that flow out of us. This is the word of God. This is the reality of the word of God. And that reality is for all of us. Not just leadership. Not just, you know, it's even for the, for the smallest of the smallest child. Because God wants to flow through us. And it's beautiful. We just drink one cup. If I may put it in that way. But there are rivers. Rivers. Jesus didn't say one river, two rivers, three rivers. He said rivers are going to flow. So you become an outlet. You, you know, through you there's an outlet. An unimaginable outlet. That causes healing, restoration, and the kingdom of God to be established. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what God is calling us as his church. See, we are all kingdom citizens. Yep. Yeah. If we have received Jesus, we belong to the kingdom of God. So, you know, this morning I want to focus a little bit on healing. And really give you three principles um, when you pray for healing and, you know, in bringing the kingdom of God wherever you go. See, and so let's turn to, and this is my main text really today, John 4, verses 46 to 53. John chapter 4, verses 46 to 53. And so, you know, Jesus comes to Cana in Galilee and, um, you know, where he had made water into wine. And there was an official whose son was very ill. And so this man heard about Jesus and so he comes to Jesus. And Jesus says to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. See, what causes you to believe? What causes you to believe? Think about it. What causes you to believe? Even that tangible proof, what is it based on? It should be based on the word of God. It should be based on the faithfulness of God. It should be based out of the intimacy that we walk with the Lord with. So you always know that faith needs a promise. Right? Faith needs a promise. And God has given us so many promises in his word. 
and, and Jesus said, look, you will believe only if you see. But I believe for, for all of us, we should believe because he has said it. We should believe because he is God. Because he is faithful. Because he is our father. Because he is our father. Because if we only believe, if we see something happen, that encourages us. But if our belief is only based on if, that I, if I see it happen, we will not live in faith. We will be living by sight. But everything with God is by faith. Everything. See, faith is a promise. But faith is also the conviction of that promise. You know, even when we came today to take communion together, we can come religiously, but we can also come in faith. Because our faith will please God. Our faith will cause us to receive what the Lord is releasing even through his table, even through what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. So everything has to be in faith. Because I trust him. I trust him beyond my situation. Like, you know, when Abraham was asked to take his son and offer him up, uh, offer Isaac up, Abraham believed God. He believed the promise to even say, I believe that God can raise this young boy up again from the dead. He believed the promise more than the situation. He believed the promise. That's faith. He didn't say, I'll wait to see what God does. He just stepped in that obedience because faith is also our obedience to him. So, you know, ask yourself, what do I really believe? You know, remember that father who came to Jesus and said, Lord, help me. I believe, but help my unbelief. See, some of us have unbelief. You know what? That's okay. There's no condemnation. It's okay. But then you ask the Holy Spirit and say, would you strengthen that muscle in me? Would you strengthen that muscle that I can believe? I've not seen things happen for years, but would you strengthen that muscle? You know, how many of you have prayed and seen a miracle happen? I see a few hands going up. Say, if you have not prayed for a miracle and you have not seen a miracle, today, ask God for that. Don't just take it for granted that miracles only happen with the leadership and not with me. So, you know, I, I will just settle for it. Because you know why? There is a miracle that needs to happen in your sphere of influence. And Pastor Dinesh is not going to come there. Your, the leadership is not going to come there, but you are going to go there. You are going to go there. So we need to begin to believe for those miracles. We need to begin to believe that the miracle can happen through somebody else. Or me. Through? Through? I'm just kind of pumping up the volume here. Through? Me. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, come on, let's be real. If I'm not believing that, I'm not expecting that, and I, I will not step into that. I will not step into that. Even on the streets, you can pray for miracles to happen. You know, we, we pray for people on the streets of London. You know, some people are like, oh, I'm, I'm scared. And we just take them. And we, we pray for strangers to receive miracles because God wants to move and God is moving but I have to believe and I have to believe that he will do it I have to believe that it's through me okay let's get back to this so then the official said to him sir come down before my child dies so you know here's a desperate father you know a desperate father who wants his son to live and then Jesus says to him, go, your son will live. And the man believed the word. Notice that. 
the man believed. See, I'm highlighting this word to you over and over and over and over again. And what's that word? Believe. Believe. Right? The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went on his way. And then he realized that then the servants came and, you know, he kind of made the calculations. And when Jesus had said, go, your son will be made well, that was the time that the son had begun to get well. Why? Because he, because he, believed. thank you, because he believed, because he believed. See, sometimes God can give us a promise. You know, he can give you a prophetic word. If you don't believe that, you might as well have not heard it. And also, when God gives you a promise, you need to ask him, Lord, what do I need to fulfill that promise? When God gave a promise to Sarah, Hebrews 11 says that Sarah by faith received the power to conceive. Isn't that amazing? She didn't say, okay, God's given me a promise. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, what will, you know, but she said, she prayed and said, God, I want the power because she looked at herself, she looked at her man, and she's like, man, we are dead. <laughs> so we need the power of God here. We need a divine intervention. And so she prayed for the power of God to enable that conception. See, we sometimes wait and hope that somebody else will do that. We hope that things will fall from the sky. God gives us the promise. But then we need to say, God, what do I need to do? I need the power to fulfill that promise. See, Jesus tells this man, go, your son will get well. Imagine, imagine you have a need. After Sunday service, you come up for prayer. And Pastor Dinesh says, go, your son will be okay. How many of you will go back? <laughs> Not blessing him. But saying, how could he? He didn't even pray. How could he? He didn't care to even pray one word. He just didn't let, told me to go. I'm actually waiting for that day that I can pray like that. <laughs> but see, it's because the key is belief. The key is belief. We sometimes have these preconceived notions about how the prayer needs to be prayed or what needs to be done. But if the Lord says believe, you believe. Simple as that. And the rest, he will take care of. He will take care of. So, you know, my three things very quickly. Um, the, the first thing is creating an expectation. Creating an expectation. Do you expect him to move? Maybe we know Jesus can heal. We all know that Jesus can heal. But would you have an expectation to say, I believe he will heal me today. Like the woman with the issue of blood. She came expecting him, expecting that miracle to flow. She came with such an expectation because faith, you know, when faith is there, it generates that expectancy. When the promise is there, then we have that expectancy. She came and, you know, there were many people touching him. But there was one touch that released the power of God. And that was a touch of faith, a touch of expectancy. A touch of expectancy. So number one is when you pray for someone, have an expectancy. You know, when, when Jesus went through many places, people brought their sick. Why? That was not the good thing to do or the right thing to do. There was an expectancy. And people got healed because of that. Do you expect God to move? Or do you pray because that's a good thing, that's a nice thing to do? When we pray, do we pray with such expectancy? 
expecting him to move. You know, I, 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 I quoted Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, you know, without faith it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do we believe that? That each time you pray at home, each time you come to church, each time you get together and intercede, that he is the rewarder as you diligently seek him. Wow. The, what a promise that is. What a promise that is. That there's a reward that gets released from heaven when you, when you come to him in faith. See, our faith in Christ creates that expectancy and it releases the power of God. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Is it up there? No. Okay, I'll, I'll read it from there. So, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So can you see that, you know, what God does in you, you don't keep it inside the church. You take it outside. You take it out of the sanctuary. You take it out of the sanctuary. You take it to the world. Jesus said, go. He didn't say, go into the synagogue. He didn't say, go into the temple. But he said, go into all the world wherever you are, and preach to every creature. Can we have the next verse? And he who, now notice this again, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Right? But he who does not believe will be condemned. That's talking about salvation. Okay? Let's move on because I'm, my focus is not on that. Now, look at this. If you have paper Bibles or whatever Bible underlines, and these signs will follow... Whom? Those who? Believe. Those who believe. In my name. So, you know, we, what, when we pray for the sick, when we cast out demons, when we, you know, do whatever, we do it in his name. In the name of Jesus. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Let me just... Pause there. See, no one drinks poison <laughs> by intention. <laughs> right? And, you know, this is revealed to me a couple of months ago. But sometimes, even the medicines that we take can become poisonous within us. We take it for one symptom, but there can be a reaction. And I believe we can, we, you know, we don't manipulate the word of God, but this verse can also mean that you pray for yourself against side effects. Against side effects. That as you take it, and, and you know, have you ever tried to read those little, you know, the, 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 the fine point, fine, you know, the, the fine points on, you know, the instructions? Oh my gosh, they have, you know, you, you'll, you'll never take any meds again. Because they, they, they say this can, this can, this can, all can happen. But here's the thing, you start laying hands on yourself and start praying. Say, God, I believe your word. I believe your word that this will not be deadly to my body. And you begin to pray every day and you see the miracle of God we have a gentleman in our church stage 4 cancer usually stage 4 cancer the next stage is that you know they pass away and when he was asked to go through his treatment the medical knowledge uh, was he's going to have this 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 and you know all these side effects and I shared this verse with him and we, we were praying for him and I said you begin to pray against every side effect and he began to do that his latest report 
was that his PSA counts had dropped, had literally dropped. And the cancer is going the other way. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, God's word is true. God's word is true. You know, when, when, I, when, I, when I learned this, I was like, wow, yes. Because anything that we take in, and if, we, if it becomes poison inside, we can pray against that. Right? So, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and what happens? They will recover. Now, that word recover is not an instant healing. This word in, in the Greek is not an instant healing. It's the process of healing that gets expedited because you have laid hands on someone who's sick. Wow. But you must believe. You must believe. Right? So because of time, I'm not going to dwell much on that. But again, number one is having an expectancy. Number two, okay, so when you pray for the sick, have an expectancy. Number two is the laying on of hands. The laying on of hands. See, when we, when we read the Old Testament, we see, you know, the blessing of a father coming to a son. We see even the sins of a nation, you know, being transferred through the laying on of hands. In the New Testament, Jesus said, lay hands on the sick. They will lay hands on the sick. So when we lay hands on the sick, that is an impartation of the power of God that happens. So that God touches somebody through you. Where is the power? Remember we looked at the verse, where is the power? Within us. So when you lay hands, that power gets released. But you must believe. Believe that when you lay hands, that the power of God is going to flow through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. The laying on of hands. Okay, so number one is having an expectancy. Number two is the laying on of hands. And in the New Testament, we see even when eldership, when leaders are appointed, there's a laying on of hands. Because there's an impartation of the Spirit that begins to happen. When we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we lay hands on people. We don't do gimmicks, but we lay hands on the people and we remain very biblical. Amen? Amen. You know, it's, it's sad because New Testament, the New Testament church is about community, like Pastor Dini was saying. You know, it's about community. It's about us. It's not about this superstar who's up there. That's not biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity is the making of disciples and those disciples making other disciples. You know, when, when the Holy Spirit was poured upon the church, Acts chapter 2, the church remained in Jerusalem for nine years. And then what happens is that there's persecution. And the believers are spread all over. But what did they do? Wherever they went, Acts chapter 8, wherever they went, they healed the sick, they cast demons out, they preached the gospel, and they built house churches. And they read, and they did Jesus' disciple. <laughs> Sorry, that's a side, <laughs> side advert there. <laughs> so, you know, biblical Christianity is about you being used for the kingdom of God. Each one of you being used for the kingdom of God. Because the Bible does not teach us and show us in the New Testament of superstar. You know, even Paul himself talks about these super apostles. But what was happening was that, you know, he was saying, look, this is not, this is not what Christianity is. God in you. The power of God in you. So don't deny you know, here's a question I wanted to ask yourself. I know I've been asking a lot of questions. Do you believe the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is upon you? Be real. Do you believe the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you? Or do you doubt it? If you doubt it, ask the Lord to help you to believe. Because he's, he's, he's promised to, he's faithful to his word. 
Okay, so number two is, number one is expectancy. Number two, laying on of hands. And number three is really the word, speaking out the word of God. Speaking out the authority of the word of God. Where you speak the word of God. When you pray for somebody, you speak God's word over that person. You know, like uh, Psalm 103 says, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and, but forget not his benefits. He who heals all your diseases. So when we take the word of God, we begin to speak the word of God because there's life in the word of God. And, and you begin to pray by the stripes of Jesus, I pray you, are, you will be healed right now. But you have to believe. You have to have that authority. You have to believe. And you release that word. See, Isaiah 55 says, you know, God says, you know, whatever word he releases will always complete its very purpose. It, it will complete its very purpose. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You know, do research on on healing scriptures, do research, have, have a, have a, have a uh, resource base. Memorize the scripture. You know, meditate on that so that you remember the Holy Spirit then reminds you. Oh, you can see, you can use this scripture, you can speak this scripture out. And you will see miracles happen. So, you know, that's my encouragement to you this morning. Is that God wants to use you. God wants to move through his church. Because here's the reality. If God doesn't move through his church, through whom is he going to work through? So we are his representatives. We are the ones who bring transformation. We are the ones who, whom God will use to touch others around us. See, I was, I was thinking, and you know, if I truly love people around me, I will bring the kingdom of God to them. If I truly love my neighbors, I will bring the kingdom of God to them. I know some, sometimes it's scared. Well, sometimes you know it's scary, but as you begin to pray for them regularly, as you begin to pray, God, give me an opportunity. God, give me an opportunity. God, will gonna, God is going to open doors. They are going to come and talk to you and say, you know what, I'm going through this right now. And at that moment, you don't say, come with me to church. That is the wrong thing. <laughs> you bring them at the, you bring them eventually. But at that moment, you are the person whom God has placed to be a blessing to that individual. You know, revival is for the church. Because revival is reviving What's kind of become to get kind, kind of dead and, you know, dried up? Evangelism is for the world. But sometimes what happens is we, we kind of swap those and we think evangelism happens inside the church. Jesus said, go. We go, we help them to come to Jesus and then bring them to get discipled. And it's, it's, it's a mistake that we all do, expecting, you know, when you have an evangelistic service in church, how many new people turn up? <laughs> very, very minimal. But that is where God wants us to go. And that's how this nation is going to change. That's how this nation is going to get transformed through you. Because when you pray for your nation, you become the answer. You become the answer in your small way, in your little way, and he will use you. Amen? Amen. Shall we pray? Maybe I can have, the, can have uh, Garat come up here. You know, let's just allow the Lord to, I'm sure the Lord began to stir up certain things in you. And I want you to respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit, not just because I'm saying it, but you really hear the Lord today, the, real, the Lord really began to stir up a, almost a 
fresh faith in you. See, even when, whenever Jesus went, he first taught, he preached, and then he healed. Because he built faith in people. And this morning, what is the Lord telling you? What is the Lord telling you? What is he speaking to you this morning? And sometimes you may say, look, you know, I'm just a housewife. You have a sphere of influence. Wherever you are, whether it's in the schools, whether it's in the office, whether it's among friends, what is the Lord speaking to you this morning? Do you have an expectancy? Or even before I go there, do you believe? Do you believe God's word? Do you believe the spirit of God who is within you is more powerful than you are? That he's more powerful than the prayers that we pray or what we want to ask him. Like we read in Ephesians 3.20. That he's more powerful to do exceedingly abundantly more than my limited nature of how I pray or how I ask him. Oh. What an amazing God we worship. Oh, Shaka Bariya Kipish. And you know, right now, if you're struggling in that area of unbelief, just ask the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, would you begin to work in me? See, it's not a thing about feelings. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about the Word of God. It's not about feelings. Our feelings will always deceive us. But it's faith. Do I believe? Not do I feel. Do I believe? Oh, show Karabakar. Whoa. And Lord, even right now, would you ignite faith? Would you ignite faith and expectancy over your church? God, would you cause a stirring of your spirit Whoa. over those who may be struggling to go beyond feeling and to believe in faith. And simply three things. Expect, expect, expect God to move. Not just know, but expect. Expect the promise. Second thing we said was lay hands. Know that the power of God can flow through you. You don't need to have a pulpit ministry for the power of God to flow. You need to have compassion and love. And speaking out the word of God. Speaking out the word of God. Krishani. Hallelujah. You know, just let's just pray. Let's just pray. Even pray in the spirit right now because I believe loving the Holy Spirit to cause a release over each one of you.